Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are continuing our coverage here in Guardians of the Galaxy Week. Today we're going to be talking about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. But before we get started, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel as we get so, so close to 250 subscribers. If you like geeky stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to get notified whenever I upload new videos. We're going to have Star Wars Visions in the next few days, Guardians 3, regular and spoiler reviews, so make sure you subscribe for all that. Now let's dive into Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. This film was easily one of my most anticipated Marvel films as it was coming out because I loved the first one. And I like this one a lot. I don't love it quite as much, but I do think Guardians Volume 2 is a very good film, just not quite on par with the first edition. This one, of course, brings back the ragtag crew, including Star-Lord, Rocket, Groot, uh, Gamora, Drax, and Nebula's there, uh, Yondu's there. And in this one, we get introduced to uh, Palm's character, a.k.a. Mantis, who's been a great addition to the MCU. And, of course, Ego, played by the legendary Kurt Russell, who was, when they announced his casting, I was blown away because I never thought Kurt Russell would join something like this. But this was, we were kind of having a Kurt Russell moment in 2017, you know, he was in the Fast franchise, this, Hateful Eight, like, Kurt Russell was around again, and I kind of miss him because after those couple things, he kind of faded away a little bit again. And I hope he has another resurgence because, man, man, oh, man, do I love Kurt Russell. But this film kind of explores the Star-Lord's relationship to his father, of course. We got a little, you know, a couple hints about possible lineage in the first one, but this really dives into it, saying that he's the son of Ego, the living planet. If you're a fan of comics, you'll know that in the comic books, he's not a sentient being. He's a giant planet, and he's he is that in this, but he also has a human form uh, in the shape of Kurt Russell. And, you know, him and... He invites the Guardians, he saves them from the, uh, what are they called, the Sovereign, and uh, he saves them, invites them to his planet, and things go well for a little bit until his master plan is revealed. And also in this one, we get some more great relationship stuff between Gamora and Nebula. We got it in the first one, but it was more or less like, I hate you, I hate you too, uh, uh, uh. In this one, there's more... Uh, you know, interesting dynamics between the two of them. They're still going after each other, but they kind of get kind of get down to the core of their problems, and they end up leaving together at the end of the film with Nebula kind of being a member of the Guardians of the Galaxy. We also get some great rocket stuff in this one with him and uh, Peter constantly arguing. We really dive into how he feels, and we got that in the first one too, which, you know, is obviously carrying it into the third volume. Of course, Baby Groot, he was, you know, everyone forgets about Baby Groot because everyone loves Grogu now, but Baby Groot was the original cute baby version of a famous Disney creature, and he's still as adorable as ever, even though we know he becomes, you know, Teenage Groot, and in Volume 3, we're getting swole, big tough guy Groot, but Baby Groot was so cute, and I'm glad that he's not just there to be cute, like, he actually gets some things to do, sure, he has those cute, funny moments, but he also has some actually interesting, important stuff to do inside of the overall storyline, Drax, Drax doesn't really get a ton to do in this one. He kind of is just there to form his bond with Mantis, which we see even more of in the holiday special. And he has some great jokes. Do I think he has a couple too, like, couple too many jokes? Yeah, I think they could have cut back a little bit on it. But do the jokes land? Are they funny? Yeah, of course, they're freaking hilarious. But I feel like there are a couple too many of them. But like I said, this film really centers in on Star-Lord's relationship with his father, with Ego, how willing he is to believe that this is his father, that he should look up to this guy. And then, you know, his heart's broken when Ego does the big reveal that, you know, he's planning on, you know, wiping out the entire universe so it's all Ego and that he put the tumor in Peter's mom. And then, you know, chaos erupts and they start fighting and the whole film goes from there. And this film cements, I know it looks like Guardians 3 is going to be super emotional, but I don't know why we're surprised by that, because Volume 1 was emotional with Groot and the bonding of these characters, and that scene when they all get drunk, that stuff's emotional. This one, you know, the arguing between Rocket and Star-Lord gets a little emotional, and of course, the death of Yondu. The first time I saw this in theaters, I'm not afraid to say I shed a few tears. I love Yondu, I love Michael Rooker, I'm a big fan. So when I saw him die, and in a very emotional way, it did get me, and it still gets me. Like, Yondu's a great character, and especially after seeing the holiday special and how they tied him into that, just, oh, oh man, I miss Yondu. This was one of the best deaths in the MCU overall, just so touching, so heartbreaking, and just really evolves the Star-Lord character, and he's still jokey, but it evolves him into a little bit more of a mature person seeing his father figure go, and of course we get introduced to the the original Guardians in the comic books, you know, Sylvester Stallone and the rest of the gangs, Michelle Yao, all those characters as well. And one of my, two of my favorite sequences actually in the entire MCU take place in this film. 
The one is when Rocket is like hiding in the woods, beating up all the Ravagers, and they're exploding up to the sky and stuff. I love that. I always have. And then the other one that I like even more, that's one of my favorite sequences in the entire MCU, is when Yondu, Rocket, and Groot are walking through the Ravager ship and just mowing down dudes. The arrows flying all over the place, taking out people, and it's just, it's fantastic. The music works so well. Also, someone else that gets a real spotlight in this film, Sean Gunn's Kraglin. I fell in love with him in this film, and I, I hope to see a lot more of him in 3. I hope he's not just sidelined to the side. And I really like this film. I'll even say I love this film, just not quite as much as I love Volume 1. Volume 1's perfect. This one's really damn good with a couple problems, but I think it's got enough a better villain than volume one actually it involves all the characters i just think there's a few too many jokes here and there but other than that this film lands perfectly for me and it still does what five six years later now at this point it's crazy to think it's been six years since we got a guardians movie but guardians volume two gets an 8.5 out of 10 for me here on the channel if volume three lands like everyone's saying it does this is easily going to be the best trilogy in the mcu for me personally but let me know what your thoughts are on guardians two down in the comments below are you one of the people that don't like this film you think it's just kind of a schlocky mess i personally don't feel that way but i know a couple of people that are so let me know down in the comments below make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel as we keep growing towards 250 subscribers thank you all for watching i'll see you guys right here next time